Welcome to part two of PDK vs. Manual 992 GT3. If you haven't checked out part one from yesterday, please check it out with the GTS Red PDK GT3. Today we have the Black Olive GT3 in manual. We actually did the delivery video on this car as well a few weeks ago. This is Jason's car. Make sure to check out Jason's channel, YYZ Curator. He likes to act like he doesn't have a lot of cars and doesn't whatever. He's got close to 20 cars. He's going to do a lot of cool content. He goes to a lot of cool events. So make sure to check out his channel. He vlogs. He does, you know, reviews on his cars. Whatever he does with his cars, he usually tries to film. And now he's going to start filming a lot more. So make sure to check out his channel. But today we have his 992 GT3 in manual. And this car only has about 350 kilometers on it. So we're pretty much driving a brand new car. So here it is. We saw it before. 992 GT3. This one has the black rims, has the black calipers, but it is the steel brake, so they might make a little bit of squeaking noise. This car is in another paint to sample color, black olive. It's kind of like this flat, dark green. And of course, the GT3 spoiler. It's got like the clear taillights. Very, very good spec overall. And it's got the olive view plate because obviously black olive. Now, when we look at the interior, it's also a very nice spec. I actually didn't really know if this is going to work or not with the contrast to the green but he has the sharp blue stitching with the sharp blue seat belts and I actually think he contrasts to the green pretty nicely uh, obviously carbon bucket seats Alcantara wheel with the sharp blue stitching as well carbon fiber trim pretty much everywhere and he for some reason has stuffed animals in the passenger seat but yeah overall very cool spec and we're gonna drive it, see what it's like. Um, so far, I've driven it. I'm not too sure about this whole manual on this car. Okay, let's start it up and go for a drive. And as you can see, this car is pretty much brand new with 356 kilometers on the clock. There you go, let's go. Stock exhaust and a manual gearbox this time. Let's see how this goes. It does not sound bad. It doesn't sound bad at all. That's pretty good. Definitely not as loud as the red PDK car, but it's not bad at all. And holy crap, this thing's nimble. Okay, so I've only driven this car so far about eight or nine kilometers. So let me give you so far my feeling of it. And again, this car is only only has 350 kilometers on it. It might not be broken in yet. So again, Jason doesn't really care. I don't know. He pushed this thing right out of the dealership, so he told me just I'm not again. I'm not pushing the hell out of it, but he told me to go for it. His car, so you know, um, pretty much. This car, like the handling, this is, everything is so tight and so like precise. And the one thing that really throws me off about this gearbox is you have like the lightest like clutch that doesn't have a clear release point. Um, the gear, like just, it, it feels like a very loose gearbox for a car that's like this precise and this tight and this like a nimble and just, it's such a good car. And I like, I don't know if this gearbox really belongs on it. It's fun, it's definitely fun. I, I gotta drive it a little bit more to see if, you know, I would personally buy one with this, but when I was driving the PDK car, it felt like a car that's on the same level as, you know, an F8 and a Performante or STO or something, or just, it felt very good. It felt like a supercar, not like a sports car. This feels more like a sports car with the manual. But, let's see. It's just too light of a sh I wish the shift was a little bit heavier. Not even necessarily clunky, but just, it's like the clutch is too light. Everything is too light, it's too easy, but not in like a good way. It just, it feels like the clutch you'd find on a golf. That's the issue and it's, it takes away some of the fun. You want to kind of work for it a little more and it doesn't match the, the seriousness of the car it doesn't matter doesn't match this gearbox. Like, 
I'm trying to think if if I were to buy one of these, which isn't a big if because obviously they're expensive, but more than that, just to get the allocation for these GT3s is like insanely hard. These cars are going for you know 100, 100 and something over sticker all day long. But let's say I had the option to order one. The PDK is definitely the best one. It's the best way to get it. The car is just everything is so good on the car there's no flaws it's literally like potentially a perfect car but with the manual you know it's not as fast as old as what it is it might be a little more satisfying to drive and the other thing you really got to consider about this car is you know the next generation gt3 is probably still going to be this good but there's a very good chance that the next generation GT3 will not offer a manual. So, do you go for the slightly more driving involvement and get the manual, which even though there is more driver involvement, it still doesn't feel so right? Or you get the perfect car and you get in a PDK and potentially risk missing out on the last manual GT3 you're gonna get. It's a tough choice. I personally don't know which way I would go with it if I had to order one. Because this car overall is so good. I don't know if I feel like I'm missing out on that PDK was really good, I don't know. drive it a little bit more and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, while I'm thinking about which transmission I would like on this car, the last GT3 we drove had a crazy exhaust by Soul Performance. This one is completely stock, but it's not like my GT4 stock. This thing makes no noise. Let's see. That soul performance exhaust was like, it was just silly and it was fun. But you would probably get in trouble if you owned one with that crazy of an exhaust. Knowing Jason, I know this car will definitely be getting an exhaust sometime soon. But it's definitely not bad at all stock. I mean, this car is so good. The GT3 just lives up to the expectation that a GT3 should have. It just, it's such a good car. Yeah, the manual's not great, but maybe it's worth the sacrifice of having not the best manual to have a potentially last manual from the GT3s. Because up till now, it was kind of known that the regular 911's manual wasn't that good, the 7-speed, like anything 991 and up. But the GT3s always kept the 6-speed, and that was a lot better. 991.2 was, you know, had a really, really good manual. I like manual similar to the GT4. This six-speed feels a little bit softer. Like it's meant for more comfort. Meant to be more easy. Oh. oh my god. This is so good. got to really consider what you're buying the car for. If you're buying this car for either track or for almost everyday driving, you're probably better off getting the PDK because the clutch on this is very weird. Like, There's not really like too clear of a wide point to it. I'm not going to lie. I saw it twice when I got into it. It took me a second to kind of realize how this clutch works. So it's not fun for like everyday driving. And definitely it's not quicker on the track. But if you're buying this car for a quick weekend, you know, drive, just rip it on the highway a little bit. Maybe 
you don't need the clutch to be that tight and maybe you don't need the gearbox to be that precise. I think maybe it's worth it just to be able to feel the gears a little bit if you're the type of person to just take it out once twice a week for a drive and just you like to feel the car. I think the manual is still the better way to go. But if you're either driving this thing all the time or you're tracking it, that PDK is so freaking good. So man, this car does sound really good stock. I know I keep saying it, but like I really wonder what the PDK combination with the stock exhaust is gonna be like because the PDK was getting all these pops and stuff when you would upshift, downshift, all that. And that's the one thing I find you don't get with this manual. Like there's no pops or anything. It just kind of, it's kind of just like a smooth shift, but it just, you know, there was that little excitement when you change up and down with the PDK and you get that pop. Like it, it, it's something that's kind of missing, but man, when you're like flooring this car on the highway and you're going through like fifth gear or something and just get it up to like 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM, this thing just screams even when it's stock. Like I love it, but I wish I had those pops from the PDK. Yeah, I just like the PDK feels a lot more solid. Like the PDK, I feel like the PDK was what was the, what this car was originally built, planned around, and then they kind of added the manual later on as a as like a well, people are gonna want manual, they'll just throw in this manual. But this car was built as a PDK, I think. Okay, so. This is my conclusion about the 992 GT3 and my conclusion between the manual and the PDK. I think the 992 GT3, obviously kind of everybody knows it's pretty much the hottest car in the market right now for new cars. They're going for 100 and something over sticker. For a car that's, you know, 200 and something sticker, that's a lot of money. Um, but I think it's worth it. I think the car, again, obviously you'd like to try to get an allocation and obviously save the money, but this is probably the best overall car on the market right now. There's not really a better supercar, better sports car. It's like literally that good that I, I would consider probably the best sports car out there. Um, but yeah, obviously now there's a question between PDK and manual. You know, people kind of look it down at you if you get PDK, you know, everybody says all oh, these cars should be manual. Honestly, I'm the first one to say that, that everything should be manual. Whatever you can get manual, get a manual. But I feel like they put a manual in this for the sake of saying they put a manual in this. I don't think the manual is nearly as good as the PDK. This car was clearly, clearly, clearly designed in mind for a PDK transmission and they threw in a manual just to be like, oh, here for the enthusiasts, we still make manuals, but they didn't put any effort into it. I mean, it's not an engaging manual. It's a very easy manual, but it's like, it's very, very light, very loose. For a car that's this tight and this good, it makes no sense. For me, honestly, I thought about it. I think if I ever buy one of these, it might have to be PDK, and I'll probably end up getting an exhaust like that, sole performance exhaust on the red one. It made the car like a whole different animal. But yeah, I would, if I had to pick between the two specs, the red one and the green one, I'd probably pick the green one spec. I think it looks really good, and I got a ton of compliments driving it around. Everybody loves the color. Even though the red one was a great spec, the silver with the silver stripe, the silver rolls with silver stripes with the red just worked so well but I'd get that PDK transmission and that exhaust that was on the red one on this green one and I think that would make it like the perfect car. But yeah, I think PDK is probably the way to go but honestly, 992 GT3 does not disappoint. 992 obviously was a bigger 911, it was too big, a lot of people complain about it. The GT3 is such a good car, I don't think there's anything to complain about. Uh, so yeah, that's my conclusion. And next video we're gonna be driving uh, 991.2 GT3 Touring, so that's kinda still in the analog-ish stage of the GT3s, the one before, that came before this, and it's the Touring, so very low-key, very discreet, but that's gonna be the next video, so tune in.